All right. Welcome, everybody, and welcome back to the Square Ring Podcast, episode 11. Wow, it's actually 11? I don't know, 10, 11, something like that. We'll figure it out. Oh, damn. For some I, I, I can look right now. It's somewhere around there, 10 or 11. I thought this was almost, be... We've been doing this for a couple months, so. I thought for sure this was 10. Well, I can always redo it. I can do it like that. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> do they go this way? <laughs> episode 10. Uh, let's see. Nope, we're on episode 11. Oh. See, I'm wrong. So that means uh, I got to shut up and mute myself during this podcast, and, and you guys got to take it on. Well, Bobby was supposed to do some research. If you guys have attended the episode, the prior episode, episode 10, Bobby was going to do some research into New Era Wrestling. Bobby Fulton. Well, it wasn't the New Era. It was the research on Bobby Fulton. Well, I meant New Era, like the new kid. <laughs> oh, you're the, you're the new kid. <laughs> I say I wasn't... I didn't really know who Bobby Fulton was, so I did research him. He was part of the Fantastics. That's one of the things where there's like a, so many famous tag teams you know the name of, but I didn't always know the individuals' names in that tag team. Once right. I read the Fantastics, like, oh shit, that's who they are. Uh, yeah. they a ton of scaffold matches. I was not. Matches. What's that? Bobby Fulton was one. Who was the other one on the Fantastics? I don't know. He's not coming. <laughs> oh, something, oh. I believe. oh, that's horrible. I, I think it was Glenn something. I'm not 100% on that one. I was that close to spitting my coffee up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did see, though, um, I forgot the original acronym, but he started a promotion that ended up be- becoming Smoky Mountain Wrestling. That one's uh, got a little bit of a following and some names behind it. Huh. I've so, never heard of that. I've never heard of Smoky Mountain. They oh, had Smoky Mountain was uh, Cornette's group. Yep. So but, uh, uh, he, he he traveled all over. He did a lot in Japan. He went all around the U.S. He was he was everywhere. Uh, Cornette's group, uh, Smoky Mountain uh, Wrestling. That was uh, actually a pretty cool. Uh, it was like somewhat independent, somewhat. Future stars, um, you know, or they had some of the stars that were in between contracts. Uh, So uh, it was like Kentucky, Tennessee area. Uh, You know, they did a lot of uh, uh, fairground stuff. Or uh, uh, I think they actually ended up getting their own building for a while. But, uh, you know, you had stars like uh, Arn Anderson was there for a while. Um, but then you had up and comers, um, you know, Jericho was there for a while. Um, you had, uh, um, a couple ECW guys that were there. Uh, hey, he did a lot of feuding with Shane Douglas. Yeah. Um, when he wasn't tag teaming. Dirty white boy was from there. Uh, gosh, it was, uh, a black tag team who ended up going to ECW, started out there. Um, what the One of the guys uh, was the one that got uh, arrested for almost killing a guy in uh, New ECW. New Jack. Yeah, so New Jack and his other, his tag team partner started out in EC. I mean, uh, oops, Smoky Mountain. Because um, uh, they talked about how Smoky Mountain area was... Uh, Kind of stole, uh, you know, the good old boys, you know, so people of color weren't exactly allowed, uh, you know, to roam around down there. And uh, so they always had to watch their backs when they would go out to wrestle. I mean, even in the wrestling ring, they had to watch their backs. Uh, you know, it was still back in the day. And like I said, this is like still the good old boy uh, country. But a lot of, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, came from there. Kane came from there. 
you know, because The Undertaker came down and wrestled a few shows for him. Uh, yeah. Because that little, uh, you know, they were not necessarily uh, uh, a stepping stone to the WWF or WWE, but uh, for some people it was. So uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I used to, a side note, um, there is a famous uh, music producer who uh, uh, used to fund uh, them. Um, Rick Rick Rubin uh, was that producer. You know, that's the guy who did a lot of uh, rap companies. Well, I mean, a lot of rap musicians uh, did the Johnny Cash uh, album that he covered, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, it's just that Rick Rubin was like. I mean, he was really into wrestling, and they didn't really get any wrestling. You know, he was into, like, wrestling, not, like, WWF or WWE. And so like he Bobby actually, Bobby. yeah, well, like, almost like, like a Bobby WCW style. style. Collegiate style. No, it, not, not collegiate style. He, he liked the good old boy wrestling. Like, uh, before WCW became, like, the NWO and shit like that, you know, when it was like the NWA, um, and that's kind of like uh, what Smoky Mountain was. So uh, they actually got funded by uh, by him, uh, which is kind of cool because, you know, the NWL was here for a while, um, and that was, I don't know the guy's name, it was some rich guy who wanted to start his own wrestling promotion, and... Uh, I had uh, one set up here in St. Louis and one set up in uh, Kansas. I think uh, it might still be going on in Kansas, but the St. Louis fraction closed up because it wasn't making any money. Um, well, there's also, things in they, French here. Well, they were also, uh, it was a unknown name company, and they immediately started wrestling at the wrestling at the Chase building. And so that building, you know, it's a couple grand every time they open the doors. Um, and for an unknown named wrestling organization that had no fans, you know, from the get-go. Um, so you're spending, you know, three or four grand on just the building, not just, you know, that's not putting the ring together, the officials, the wrestlers yeah. that you have to pay. You know, that was just uh, just to open the doors. So, you know, they weren't making any money. Uh, so they oh, break up. even. It's too high. Oh, yeah. Well, what also kind of did a man is he came in here and, and he swooped in and signed people to contracts and actually had lawyers look at them and, you know, sign them to a one, two, three-year deal. and. Uh, so none of the independents are like that. You know, you can go to GCW, you can go to, uh, you know, SICW, you can go to New Breed. Um, and, you know, it's it's like a one-shot deal. Or maybe if you're, you know, going to be in the area for a while, you know, six months. Um, but, you know, you're not paying that talent to live. And, you know, he was signing them to a contract to actually pay them not to work a day job and actually to work, um, you know, which is great, you know, using them to uh, uh, get healthy, get in physical shape and be ready to wrestle. But when you're not making any money and yet you're paying these guys to do this, you're eventually going to go into the red. Seriously. Yeah. Well, that's a red right from the start. <coughs> Sorry, I still got my, my cough. Um, but, yeah, and uh, I don't know if the Kansas City is still up and running. They might be closed down by now, too. But uh, I know the St. Louis fraction did close, and they've been closed a few years now. The great news and some shitty news. Over the weekend, we had a show. Happy uh, news. Somebody lost their straps. Their straps. That would be not that so great news. Rub that in there. <laughs> <laughs> that I get the bad news out good. first. 
Well, uh, Bobby, how'd your match go? Let's start off. Mine was good. Still sore today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> went against Prater. Um, hit him with that big old belly to belly overhead suplex. You know, for the first time. I think that's what has me so sore for so long. <laughs> but it ended up going good. Um, got the one, two, three on him, and here we are. Uh, Prater's a big boy. I mean, he's got to be at least my weight, about, you know, 350. Um, but he's short, so he is all. He's um, solid. Yeah, solid. Yeah, that's a that's a good term for it. I uh, so. heard um, Drew at the table after I did it yell, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> So if you purchase that DVD, I'm guessing that's on the commentary, and you'll get to hear that. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going if that's on mine because uh, unfortunately my battery died halfway into your match, and by the time I was able to get the new battery in, you already pinned him. How does the oh, battery man. die when you don't even turn your mic on? Oh, hey, that was only for the first hour. <laughs> I heard about that. <laughs> Not that Nate told me. Nate didn't say anything. Oh, he's gonna keep I that told everybody else yeah, you were hiding in the back so I wouldn't steal your hat. Huh? I had I to get ready for that title shot. I forgot to turn that mic on. and So most of the fan interviews I can't use. <laughs> Unless you can read the <laughs> Yeah, you can read well, the No, no. What you should do is just... Uh, Play the video, and since it's your mistake, you can actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> you and make your voice say, sound like what you think the fan sounds like. Well, not what they sound like. My, I just can't get that high. <laughs> so, uh, your first night out at a wrestling show for the Squared Ring podcast. All you had to do was record some interviews with some fans and yep. record some matches, and you screw it up from the very beginning. Man, how is yep. our fans going to like and subscribe to the Square Ring when their <laughs> interview is not even on it now? Come back you March 11th, and we'll have you on that. that. <laughs> March 11th, we'll do it all again. Hopefully, you guys will be more willing to talk. Because a lot of people I approached were just like, we watch you, but I don't want to be on it. Oh, really? See, that's, that's where we got to wait till you get to intermission or something, after they've already been entertained and they're loosened up. Was that? So when they've had a few White Claws and Mark, Mike Hart Lemonade. Yeah, so people, if you want to get it. Yep. Alcohol is served there, so liquid courage. Liquid courage. All right, so uh, what's the good news, Jim? <laughs> that was. Well, you got to talk news. about your matches first. Can't get into that yet. <laughs> that is true. Okay, your match, Jim. Well, I would say matches. It wasn't just one. You know, what I went nice? there. I went there only knowing about one. You know, it was supposed to be me versus Attila. Uh, but, uh, you know, L.A. Hustlers were in town, and uh, they wrestled and then called me and Gary Jackson out. Uh, so, you know, we are we always claim to be fighting champions. So, uh, you know, we went out there, and uh, they wanted a title match right then and there, and we obliged them with it. So, uh, you know, we had a, a impromptu match. A match that clearly we had won twice because uh, uh, I don't know their names, but I pinned the big guy, you know, one, two, three. And then uh, Lucky P decided he was going to sneak in with his briefcase, but I caught him. So everything was still good. And then uh, the, the skinnier one, you know, uh, was trying to hit me from behind. And then, uh, you know, I knocked him out. And I was trying to cover him, and then, uh, long and behold, Attila started attacking me. And, uh, you know, of course, Attila wasn't even in the match. Um, of course, our ref had been knocked out because uh, he got in a way. 
I was trying to uh, uh, splash the big guy, and uh, he backed out, and, and the ref was there, so he got splashed. So he was knocked out. So we didn't get no interference call uh, since Attila came in. And then uh, me and Tilla just, you know, uh, fought each other, you know, all over, all over the audience. And then uh, eventually we Started fought each other. That, that title later on, huh? Yeah, and so yeah. fought into the back, uh, which unfortunately left Gary out there by himself. And um, he actually did great because uh, he uh, he did a swinging net breaker on one of them and was going for the pin. Um, but then, uh, the other one got up and did something to Gary. And of course the, the worst timing about it is the ref was coming to, uh, when Gary was getting pinned. And so that ref one didn't see me pin the other two guys, didn't see Attila come out and woke up just in time to see Gary getting pinned. So we lost the tag strap Saturday. Yeah, but I have video and close-up video of that match showing you pinning both of them, Attila coming out, you playing with the crowd. Well, <laughs> and I don't know. Gary getting pinned, so I don't know. I think it's BS. You got robbed, and uh, they should give him back. Well, I mean, definitely, but... Uh... Uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, wrestling, they don't do uh, uh, what, like football does and uh, review no, the tape. Replay. Yeah, instant replay. It would be nice, um, but, you know, it's not set up that way. But that just carried on into the rest of the night. So uh, eventually when it was finally me and Attila's match, <coughs> You know, Attila likes to hide uh, a certain utensil uh, up his sleeve. And, yeah, let's uh, get a close-up, Jim. Get close to your camera. Let's see your uh, your battle scar. My uh, battle scar? Yeah. Uh, so, of course, Attila uh, was able to use it and busted me open. And, uh, you know, basically I had blood in the right eye because it just soaked up into my eyeball. Uh, so I have a cool picture around. of that. So look. Look over there for the cool picture. <laughs> uh, so, so we were going around and around. What? That soaked up your eyeball enough to lose your contact out there. <laughs> I did lose my contact. So now you're really wrestling blind in the middle of the match. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we fought everywhere. You know, again, in the audience, uh, we used chairs. Um, I eventually got a hold of his fork. And I started using it on him. And uh, later in the match, or I guess towards the end of the match, uh, the ref finally seen the fork. Of course, it was in my hands. And he disqualified me. Oh, so, you know, again, well, I mean, again, um, Attila, you know, was using it. Uh, busted me open. Otherwise, how would I have got busted open first? Um, we used chairs on the outside of the ring. And uh, the one time, well, it was a couple times, but the one time I started using his fork and bust him open, I get disqualified. So, you know, we had a perfect setup. We had the Dogtown Underground out of there. We had uh, the rest of Devastation Incorporated out of there. So it was finally just going to be me and Attila. And lo and behold, I get basically screwed again by a ref. Um, you just weren't as good at forking him as he was at forking you. Yeah, everybody got forked. <laughs> well, okay, you know, so let's, let's talk conspiracy here, Jim, because uh, why was that certain referee refing that match when usually he doesn't ref your and Attila's matches? Yeah, you well, said conspiracy. I thought we were going with the air balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and aliens, <laughs> right? I mean, Bobby is correct. Uh, when we were wrestling, uh, there was an air balloon above the ring, and <laughs> somehow the ref was trying to shoot it down. And a fork came out of it, 
And, and a little elephant in my hand. And the little green lasers blinded him. <laughs> right. It's it's a big conspiracy. And uh, from what I heard, um, that balloon came from China. Or was it China? China. China. <clears throat> you know, I don't know. And, and it's not that Nick doesn't rough my matches. Because, um, you know, I've had all three of them. You know, Dan, uh, Danny, and I'm sorry, Denny, uh, Nick, and Bill. You know, I've had them all rough my matches. Um, now, when it comes to Attila matches, normally it's Denny that uh, that does Attila's matches. So that's kind of weird. Um, and this isn't my conspiracy because a couple fans have actually got a hold of me on Facebook and said, well, why was Nick roughly, uh, roughing the main event? He normally don't ref the main event. So I don't know. And then uh, at the same time, Nick did, is a senior official. Yeah, I know, but it's just it's just so weird and it's just uh, unusual. And then, uh, like I said, uh, you know, if it was a no DQ match, why were we allowed to hit each other with chairs? Why was he allowed to use the fork? Because you know, Nick. I mean, not Nick. Uh, Nate has some very close-up shots of a fork sticking out of my head. I do. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't put it there. Uh, so, I mean, you can say that that night I was pretty much screwed by both refs uh, that worked that night. So, and well, maybe even all three. And it was a fan conspiracy, which yeah, seems uh, to be... Uh... No. How long, uh, how long do you have the tab traps? Maybe, I don't know. It was probably, what, October? Yeah. Uh, but those tag straps, those tag straps were new to SICW. <coughs> maybe two and a half, three years uh, that they've been with oh, SICW. Okay. Um, but, uh, no, so I, me and Gary, we were just the recent ones that, uh, we beat um, uh, Marlon McDarby and uh, Kowalski uh, for those belts. Uh, back in Belleville, it was uh, our last Belleville show that we had. Um, it's just coincidence that we lost them back in Belleville. <laughs> um, coincidence or conspiracy? The fans think conspiracy. Well, it's, well not that, it's not that yearly Belleville show. It's now our new monthly Belleville show. That's true. And I do get a crack back at them because it's already been announced. At least uh, Nate said it's been announced. I haven't seen the announcement, but uh, uh, I guess we get a rematch on uh, March 11th. Oh, they were saying revenge on March 11th. So you can't have revenge because you without you and Gary. Well, that's true. Um, so I haven't heard it officially announced yet, so it might be true, it might not be true. But uh, if we do get a rematch, that'll be great because then we'll I will be able to just focus on a tag match, uh, and me and Gary can work as a tag team instead of um, you know a third party coming out there and uh, you know uh, me having to fight him off. So Saturday was not the best night for me. You know, it was uh, a coming home event because me and Bobby are both originally from Belleville. Uh, so it was supposed to be uh, a great night. You know, Bobby was supposed to maintain his belts. I was supposed to keep uh, the tag and earn another. Yep, uh, I was looking only... forward to having both those belts on your side and his right there and me being the loser with nothing. That's the way it was supposed to be. <laughs> Well, you get you one of them uh, twenty dollar WWE toy belts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the arm just, one that they sell on the just WWE. Just hang it up on your, uh, on your blinds behind you there, one of them toy ones. Yeah. <laughs> hang it from you the know, Speaking of that, <laughs> I was able to get my hands on one of these. Uh, so this has got this is the poster for. Uh, May 13th. Now, I would say it's official, but not official 
the final poster. And I say that because uh, there's already one more guy that's not on here that should be, and that's Gerald Brusco's son because um, he's been announced that he's going to wrestle on there. Uh, now We have got son, to meet him before. He's wrestled for SICW before. He is a genuinely nice guy. He doesn't try to big-time anybody. Yeah, it's just weird to me that he hasn't uh, gone, uh, you know, to like the WWE or, yeah. or uh, AEW because, one, you know, he's Gerald Brusco's son, and he, I mean, he is – yeah, he has the like a wrestler. You know, he he's got the look. Uh, he's definitely got the uh, the um, uh, the athletic part of it because uh, you know he was trained by his dad. But uh, so I mean, it's got it's got old Buff at the top, the Nasty Boys. I mean, it's got everyone. So uh, you know, May uh, May thirteenth, like it says, at the uh, Aviator Hotel. I would tell you guys that uh, uh, Herb has already announced that uh, 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 the tickets are selling fast. You know, he's got people coming down from Canada. He's got people coming up from Texas. And I ain't talking wrestlers. I'm just talking fans. And uh, mm-hmm. they're booking the hotel and booking uh, for the fan fest and everything. All right. Yeah. So, you know, for everyone that's local and is in viewing range of this and they want to get tickets, I would suggest you get tickets fast, you know, sooner than later. Because, uh, uh, you know, we had not to drown the, the party here, not that we're having a great time, but, uh, you know, we just had a legend pass away, um, yeah. you know, and, and that was yeah. uh, Tuesday, yesterday, um, right? Yesterday, yeah, Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, Jerry Jarrett passed away, you know, uh, he was in his eighties. I, I, I heard, um, but, uh, you know, that's a guy who talking about contributing to the business and he was a big factor of the business, you know, him, his mom, his son being partners with, uh, another guy we almost lost, uh, Jerry, the King Lawler, yeah, you know, Jerry was able to pull through. Um, I haven't heard any updates. I'm sure he's still in the hospital, though. Um, well, no, I think they sent him home. Did they sent well. I mean, that's that's good then. Yeah. Um, but Is he uh, talking so to you? Was, I remember last week they said he wasn't talking. Oh yeah, he was eventually talking because uh, Jr. announced that he was carrying conversations with him. Cool. And yeah. I seen his son had posted some pictures of him sitting up and smiling so and said that everything was looking good. I just didn't know if they released him or not. So I mean, Yeah, I think I read where they sent him home. They just he just had to go to therapy. Yeah. But like I said, we lost Jerry Jarrett. And uh so I mean uh the legends, you know, we just lost Lenny Poffalo. Uh so the legends, you know, uh, are not they're not promised tomorrow. So when you have a car like this, it's got 30 plus legends on there. Um, I suggest you go out. If, if you are fans of theirs, I suggest you go out and you talk to them, you meet them, um, you know, get an autograph from them, uh, bullshit with them for a minute or so. Uh, cause you never know, um, who's going to be next. Cause unfortunately, you know, all of our idols are getting older. Well, I mean, hell for that matter, you got uh, Briscoe, um, who passed away, and Briscoe was, I don't know his exact age, but I know he had to be under 40. Um, So, I mean, you just never know. Uh, You can get those tickets at SICW.org. Right. Yep, and uh, you can call the Aviator Hotel uh, and get set up for uh, a hotel room because I know it's not uh, in conjunction. So SICW.org is where you can get the Fan Fest tickets. Uh, you can get the tickets for the show that's uh, that night. Um, and from what I and gather... First, uh, was it two rows? I think that's an upgrade thing you can do. The first two yeah, rows. There, the show. there is an upgrade to that. But... Uh, from what I'm gathering still, it's going to be a fan fest. 
uh, up until uh, five o'clock. Uh, then, then they're going to hold uh, the Hall of Fame inductions. Uh, you know, for J.J. Dillon and for Gerald Briscoe, uh, and then that's going to lead, lead into the show. Huh? Said Ann Glenn Williams. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just ask him. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you can go from rookie of the year, well, trying to get rookie of the year <laughs> without there being such a thing as rookie of the year to be inducted into the St. Louis Hall of Fame, who I don't think he's wrestled in St. Louis yet. I don't think Glenn Williams uses logic either, though. <laughs> Oh, there's another one I met on Saturday that doesn't use logic and has that much attitude. That is Sean. He probably thinks he's at that level, too. You know, I always, when he was our ambassador and whatnot, you know, I always had my reservations with him because when I got into, like, watching local wrestling, he acted like he does now. It's like he was just on his good behavior for a little bit and then his real personality is shining through again. <laughs> Let's backtrack a bit on Herb's Facebook. It says SICW March Revenge and has LA Hustlers on there. So you can only have revenge if uh, you lost your strap. So oh, you got to be careful Probably. too, though. You, uh, they have the champions advantage now. That's true. But I think everything was their advantage last time because, you know, Lucky was involved, <laughs> Attila was involved. There was a knockdown ref uh, that was involved. So uh, as long as everything is focused on the tag match, should be totally a, a different outcome. Because, uh, you know, Nate, you can show him or maybe you can cut the footage because I know you, you recorded it. You know, that big guy might be taller than me. He might be bigger than me. Uh, but I suplexed him like I can suplex anyone else. Tall guys can come falling down. So, well, I'm definitely yeah, gonna have I'm that not sure that they can really worry about a, a pin or a submission because they can keep their titles with a count on or a DQ. You wow. can do on your toes. <coughs> I guess it really just depends if Lucky's gonna be there and, uh, you know, if he's gonna bring a suitcase and everything else. Well, you know, he's going to because most of the time the underhanded is how we win. That's true. If you're looking for an underhanded snake way to keep a title, Lucky's your guy. Yeah. Well, they'll probably DQ you in March. <laughs> <laughs> Still bring well, it anyway. Just... And, think, and speaking of Hall of Fame. Wait, uh, why are we going into the Hall of Fame? No, <laughs> no, no, I believe uh, that I would saw be the searcher announce uh, a big guy, a big Texan guy. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, unbeknownst to me, because I didn't see this coming, and I didn't even know it was coming. <laughs> um, but uh, was it uh, Sunday night? Um, and it was late Sunday night too. Um, on the Falls Count Anywhere podcast. Uh, right there. Oh yeah, you got it. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, so on their po podcast. Uh, you know, it's a Z Miz and uh, Rick Ruby. Uh, they had Searcher, who is uh, the founder of ACW, uh, American Championship Wrestling, who is also uh, one of the founding members of the Midwest Independent Hall of Fame. 
announced uh, two guys that were going into this year into the Hall of Fame. And uh, so I would like to say I got great company, you know, so he announced me first. Uh, so looks like I'll be going into the Hall of Fame this year. And so is uh, Bishop Stevens. Um, now, Bishop, uh, I, like I said, great company because he's worked for uh, WCW. He's worked for WWF. Um, me and Bobby know him because he worked for GCW, you know, Gateway mm-hmm. Championship Wrestling. Uh, he was one of the Sharp brothers. <laughs> so, Bishop uh, Stevens has also Stevens, been an actor too, not just wrestler. Right. So he's uh, he's been in a few uh, sitcoms. He's been in a few movies. Uh, so I think two of his biggest things were uh, he was part of Walking Dead and Empire. And that's the television series. I know he uh, just did a, a movie. It was a horror movie. It wasn't bad either because I watched it. It was with uh, CM Punk. Uh, CM Punk was the main actor, and he played um, a sheriff or a cop or something in it. Um, and even I tried to do some uh, acting with him at one point because uh, he was trying to produce. Uh, at the time, he was hoping it was just going to be a mini series, um, but it was uh, like a space type of uh, sitcom. Um, what's it called when you take, um, like old stuff and you, uh, make it new and you mechanically, you make it like an outfit. Um, uh, like a repurpose. Yeah, not a repurpose. You know, it's like a fad, uh, where they take like, uh, uh, pilots, uh, glasses and they turn it into like, um, God, what's the name of it? Retro? No. Well, the, the name of it was uh, Adventures of Balaam Tusk. Um, but the whole movie was done in space, but everyone had, uh, everyone was kind of wearing, oh, steampunk. Steampunk was oh, what it's called. That was so weird. Um, so they were all kind of dressed up like that. <coughs> and, uh, you know, of course, uh, Bishop Stevens was the main guy. And then the main villain um, was uh, the former NWA heavyweight champion, uh, uh, Trevor uh, uh, Murdoch. Uh, he was uh, the main villain. Well, the main henchman. And I was part of his, like, henchman squad. Uh, so, uh, you know, we did some filming in... Uh, didn't hear anything about it for a while. And then the last I heard about it, that uh, it might get picked up for a movie. Um, uh, of course, I was just a henchman. I would like to say that I was a henchman that did not die. Uh, all the other henchmen died. So I'll do a shout out to Cecil, uh, Philly Blunt in the <laughs> wrestling world, um, which Philly Blunt is going into another Hall of Fame this year because uh, there's a. Um, uh, I, f- I can't remember if it's the St. Louis Independent. There's a lot of Hall of Fames. Um, you know, I'm going into the Midwest Hall of Fame, but I think there's a St. Louis Independent Hall of Fame as well, and Cecil's going into that one this year. Um, there was also another wrestler that was the other henchman. Oh, you know what? Searcher, Pat, was one of the henchmen as well. So it was like all the bad guys in this production were all wrestlers. Um, gosh, I wish I can remember the other guy's name. Uh, and WWE should have, entertainment should have picked up on it and put it out. You would think because uh, all of us wrestlers know how to do stunts because uh, we all know how to fall and protect ourselves. Um, so, I mean... I would like to say, though, that uh, Searcher, uh, he died, you know, in that. Uh, Cecil died in that. And like, like, again, I would say I was the only henchman uh, that survived. So if anything comes of it, Mr. Bishop Stevens, I am available. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's, uh, I think there's going to be two more guys um, that's going to be uh, called out pretty soon. Um, they haven't announced their names and then there's always, 
Was it, the, was it one of the ones that I talked to you about on Saturday? Uh, talk to me or Bobby? No, you. Uh, I mean, I didn't find out until Sunday. Uh, hmm. But those are the only two. Me and Bishop Stevens were the only two that's been announced so far. But I think there's either two or three that are still going to be announced. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's pretty cool. Uh, you're actually inducted into this Hall of Fame by the previous uh, inductees. So, say, four people got inducted into this Hall of Fame. Then they come up with a list of five people that they think should deserve to be in a Hall of Fame. And so out of those four people, their list of five each, if all four of them chose Nate, so all four chose Nate, so Nate will be inducted into Hall of Fame next year. And so, uh, and so it's depending on who, uh, how many people chose you uh, to be inducted. And so, you know, I don't, I'm not too sure when this Hall of Fame started. Uh, but I know I've been going to the last three years. Um, so I know normally about four or five people go in a year. Uh, so evidently I must have been on a few people's lists. Um, you know, to, you travel around and wrestle. Story. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, when people ask me how long I've been in it. I, I really can't tell because um, I know I started, I tried to start um, initially, I think I was 19 or 20 because um, uh, I started uh, in the training and this, back when I started training, it wasn't uh, you train for a couple months and you get on a card. Uh, they literally took a group of people and uh, say like there's a, a group of 15. Well, their job was to get everyone to quit. Uh, so they would, you know, run you to death. They would oh, make wait. you do squats. They would make you uh, do uh, what they called man in the middle where you were in the center of the ring and you, every move you had to take from everyone. So if there's, like, if the, like I said, if there's 15 newbies, and there was like four coaches. Uh, so that's 19 people that's going to do that move to you. And whether it be, you know, uh, you know, clotheslines or power bombs or, and they would just do this repeatedly to, just to get you to quit because uh, uh, they liked having small numbers. So if they can get 15 down to five in a week, you know, that's what they're going to do. Um, but the, the shitty part about it is, like, I was part of a, a group of 15 and dwindled it down, dwindled it down, dwindled it down until, uh, you know, I was the remaining guy. And then they brought in another class. And I always tell, like, the first week of a class, I always considered it to be like hell week. But I always tell everyone that my hell week never went away because, uh, Every time they wanted it down so much, they invited so more people to come in, and so they started over trying to knock these people out. And you had uh, hell months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a hell year because I I trained for damn near a whole year, and um, then it got down to me and another wrestler. Uh, his name was Jerome Cody. Um, I'll never forget it too because it was the first time I got kicked out of Broadway. Uh, the very well. Wrestled, bro. Hold on. He's a bit of a character. Not my first time kicked out of Broadway. This was my second time kicked out of Broadway. Because um, the first time, man, see, my, I, I need to sit down and actually write everything out. Because the first time I was at Broadway, uh, I was wrestling. I wasn't even wrestling. I was training with this uh, guy named Blade. It was a black guy named Blade. He uh, approached me. I was working at uh, a Vovlin Instant Oil Change. Um, and he uh, he told me, he goes, man, you're a big guy. Have you ever thought about wrestling? And uh, I said, I, I love wrestling. I would love to be a wrestler. And uh, he goes, well, I'm trying to build, a, uh, I'm trying to start a, an organization. 
and trying to get it up off the ground. And so I'm trying to get some people in to get trained to be wrestlers. And uh, so I was like, I was all for it. And uh, he would meet, have us meet. Sometimes we would meet at the mall in Fairview Heights. Uh, sometimes it would be at the YMCA, uh, YMCA uh, which no, is no longer there. It was downtown Belleville, uh, the old YMCA. And, uh, you know, there was uh, one standout, and his name was uh, Corey Twist. Um, he was probably the best one there. And I think he was actually had been wrestling somewhere else uh, for a while before he came up. But that training was done on wrestling mats on a basketball gym floor. So, I mean, Bobby can tell you the wrestling mats aren't like thick mats. Nope. And we would have to take back bumps um, on these little thin mats on a basketball floor. And uh, we did that for quite some time before this gentleman's checks started bouncing at the YMCA. And, uh, and then eventually we got kicked out of the YMCA. So uh, evidently he knew about Broadway or was part of Broadway at some point in time. Now, when he first met me, he had, um, back in the day, all the wrestlers would have a picture of theirs, like a promo pick. And he had a promo pick from the WWF. And um, I think I still have it in my collection somewhere. But I know his name was Blade. I've never seen him in the WWF. Uh, so it might have been just a promo pick that he made. Because uh, after this, I heard he went to jail for fraud. Um, but uh, so we actually, he snuck us into Broadway at night. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if anyone knows Broadway... The old gym was a wrestling, boxing, MMA, weightlifting gym. So it was normally open because th there was someone always there, whether it would be a boxer, a wrestler, or a weightlifter. And uh, so we would go in, and he would teach us. And, uh, and then one night, I guess we got caught, and uh, we got kicked right the fuck out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So that was my first time getting kicked out of Broadway or MMWA. Um, but anyway, that was the first time I was kicked out of Broadway. Second time, I went back on my own, uh, not knowing anyone, uh, because no one from that first group that snuck in there with the Blade was ever allowed back in there. Uh, and I never told anyone that I was part of that group. Uh, so Well, you're so small, you just sneak right in. Right, right, right. Uh, the good thing about Broadway is that it was never consistent on who was going to be there that night. So uh, I was able to sneak back in. And then that's when I started my whole stint uh, with Broadway and uh, got down to, like, me and Jerome Cody. And uh, God bless his heart, Tony, little Tony, not the current Anthony that's running MMWA, but uh, lost awful. Tony. Uh, you know, he uh, told me and Jerome uh, to uh, to have a match, and uh, we had a match, and it was a really shitty fucking match. And uh, Tony looked at both of us and said, uh, "You may leave," and uh, got cut from fucking Broadway again. And uh, it would not be the last, but uh, that's for other stories. But uh, I think it was. It's pretty cool. This Hall of Fame is, you know, it's so it's a collection of promoters because Herb Simmons is in it. You know, of course, uh, Searcher or uh, Pat, uh, he's in it. Uh, Frank uh, uh, Root is in it. Uh, so, and that's a, a promoter that me and Bobby have both worked for um, uh, very early on in our careers. Um that's another story on its own. Pizza um, farm. But, <laughs> uh, that uh, he was the promoter that would uh, uh, give you the hot dog and the handshake for a payoff. So I'll just I'll just say <laughs> that that's, only but, when know, he fell it out. When he ran in like um, Wood River area, 
He was always drawing business there. Wood River Bethalto, he did good there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we were young in our careers. And, you know, when you're young in your careers, you'll work anywhere. You know, just uh, give me a shot. <laughs> yeah, just let me work for you. So, you know, even though a lot of people give him shit for a hot dog and a handshake, most of the people are glad to have that hot dog in the handshake when you're first it's beginning. Yeah, because, you know, you got to get your name out there. That's the whole wrestling game right there. You got to get your name, you got to get your face, and you got to travel. I mean, to skip ahead in the training uh, story there, like, we were training for, what, about a year, and Broadway still wouldn't give us a match, and we had to go work with Frank? Yeah. Just get some experience? So, um, there was a time when I, the, the second time I got kicked out of Broadway, there was a gap between me going back to Broadway with Bobby. Uh, cause, uh, uh, Bobby, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have gone back. Um, even though I, I loved him. I say, Jim actually told me about Broadway. I'd seen them on TV before. Didn't know where they were or anything. I took a person with me, Chad, who quit after one day. <laughs> and then, you know, sitting in Jim's living room, it's like, I need someone to work out with. <laughs> I mean, I loved my time at Broadway in the beginning. Um, even though, I mean, the head coach there at the beginning was, his name was Gino Harris, uh, the exterminator. And uh, he would, uh, like I said, he would beat the piss out of you. Um, but it was one of those things that you know it sucks that you're going through it, but it's gonna, you know it's going to make you so much better in the end. And uh, I would not trade the experience uh, for anything. It was definitely a boys' club. Um, I'll just say it like that. Um, but, yeah, he, uh, he wanted you to quit, and he would try to do anything he could to get you to quit. Um, well, but, how long were you a wrestler before you got involved, Bobby? Jim, how long were you in it before Bob? Before you brought Bobby in? So that was like two years of my life dealing with Blade and dealing with uh, the training at Broadway. Um, and then I probably gave up in, I don't know, it was probably three years uh, before Bobby came along, maybe even four years before Bobby came along. Uh, but he wasn't just sitting around either. He's playing semi-pro football at the time. That's true. I went from wrestling to football, and I did that for two years. Uh, matter of fact, I should have joined the rest of my football team because uh, they all, my winning team, because we won both years that I was there, uh, they all converted into arena football uh, for St. Charles. And uh, I didn't. Because at that time period, I was already a store manager of a, a quick lube. Um, and when you're arena, that's all you are, is your arena football. And um, I already had a wife and uh, maybe one or two kids by then. So uh, uh, I had to go another route. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there was a, a, a gap between uh, my two years of of training to be a wrestler versus when Bobby uh, pulled me back in. Now, I'll tell you, I never stopped wanting to be one. Because, um, okay. you know, I when I said I needed a partner, I didn't have to say it twice. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> he didn't twist his arm? <laughs> no. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is when you're, when you're young and say like you're in this small town of Belleville, and then you start having to travel outside of Belleville and going to St. Louis and, and all the highways and everything. I used to get lost all the time because, uh, you know, even though I had a brother and cousins and, and friends coming in and out of uh, my house that I lived at at that time, uh, I was the only one. And, you know, it's funny because you heard about the pay-per-view parties uh, that all these people would have to watch a, a night, I mean, a, a WCW pay per view or a WWF pay per view. We would all have these parties uh, at my house. And uh, I was the only one that, like, on my own decided, 
I'm going to make this happen, you know? And uh, I always thought that was so weird because, you know, there would be a group sometimes of 25, 30 people at the house watching these pay-per-views that you would steal because you would have that little cable, little uh, and antenna <laughs> hookup thing that you would put on your, on your TV. Um, but, That's uh, allegedly. Uh, Jim never stole anything and Bobby never stole anything. That's allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. I mean, we I'm might have bought it the first time. Guys, you know. I've allegedly done a lot of things. But, uh, you know, so I would get lost. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've told this story uh, a few times. Uh, when I very, the first time I was traveling by myself and I wanted to see a wrestling show, it was, I'd never heard of MMWA. Uh, and this was before I had been to the buildings and before I'd been to training. But I heard of a group called GCW, Gateway Championship Wrestling. And uh, this particular night, I was traveling on my own. Um, I went down to uh, Soulard Street. Or, uh, that's, uh, what's the name of the street that uh, brought, well, South Broadway. Yeah. It's on South Broadway. Uh, so this particular night, South Broadway, MNWA, had a wrestling show. And three blocks down the street, GCW had a wrestling show. I mean, you, you're talking about, Herb talking about nowadays that there's oversaturation. You're talking about within a four-block radius that there was two wrestling companies having a wrestling show on at the same night. Uh, so, from the stories I hear, that might have been by design because... What I was told, Ben came from MMWA. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you know. Well, there might have been some for that. Yeah, you had Ben, you had uh, Kevin, uh, you know, um, Kevin Sharp, uh, you had Keith Smith. Um, you know, they all came from Broadway and started Gateway. Um, but the funny thing is, is as I'm driving down this street, I see. MMWA sign on the building that says wrestling here tonight. And so I get out and I park and I go up to the building and uh, I get to the part where you're buying tickets and I see a fucking wrestling ring in there and there's people gathered around to watch a wrestling show. And I asked them, I said, is this gateway championship wrestling? And they said, no, it's a couple blocks down the street. So I left Broadway that was having a wrestling show that night to go watch Gateway Championship Wrestling. And, uh, you know, it's so funny because I never even wrestled for Gateway. But time, uh, you know, we actually uh, was out wrestling on our own independently. Gateway had already closed down. Um, but uh, uh, it was so funny because, you know, I heard of them. And I went to go see them, but I had stopped in at Broadway uh, <laughs> and, and passed. <laughs> you know? But it, it's just funny how the wrestling world is so big, but at the same time, so small. Yeah. Uh, that's when we all go back to Vegas uh, for the Cauliflower Alley Club, which... Uh, you know, uh, I gave props on with a little uh, YouTube video on my account um, because, uh, you know, we got to meet um, Jerry Lawler. Uh, yeah, Jerry Lawler. Jarrett. Jerry, yeah, Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, uh, Mouth of the South, uh, you know, Jimmy Hart. And uh, actually, uh, I guess it was Jeff Jarrett's cousin. Uh, he was the, the host that night. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we got to meet the whole Memphis team, and um, which I want to trade that for the world right now because the Memphis team seems to be uh, having a really shitty year, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pause my mic in my video, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Hell no! 
more of an Nutella fan? No. Oh.